Hey, good evening, everyone. I'm really honored to see everyone here, see a lot of great friends. And uh, one thing I'm gonna do is a little bit unusual. I hope, I hope I'm not doing a cultural faux pas. I actually want to give the prayer tonight. Now, the reason is my favorite prayer is prayer of St. Francis. And I like that because it's, as a diplomat, I've always felt like it was my idea to promote peace, uh, mutual understanding. And so the prayers always meant a lot to me. So my last official event that I'm hosting here in Samoa, I wanted to go ahead and say that prayer. So now time for the prayer. Lord, make me a channel of thy peace that where there is hatred, I may bring love. That where there is wrong, I may bring the spirit of forgiveness. That where there is discord, I may bring harmony. That where there is error, I may bring truth. That where there is doubt, I may bring faith. And that where there is despair, I may bring hope. That where there are shadows, I may bring light. And that where there is sadness, I bring joy. Lord, grant it that I may seek rather than to comfort, than to be comforted, to understand, than to be understood, to love, than to be loved. For it is by self-forgetting that one finds. It is by forgiven, it is by forgiving that one is forgiven. It is by dying that one awakens to eternal life. Amen. So, Honorable Prime Minister, Honorable Members of Cabinet, Honorable Acting Chief Justice, Congresswoman Amata, my distinguished, my distinguished colleagues in the Diplomatic Corps, ladies and gentlemen, talofa lava and good evening. When Izumi and I arrived in Samoa two and a half years ago, I felt a sense of trepidation. Professionally speaking, here I am assigned to the only American embassy with only one actual diplomat. My boss, Ambassador Scott Brown, was located in, in another country in Wellington. How was how the Samoan staff going to treat me? Personally speaking, how were Izumi and I going to enjoy living in a small, isolated Pacific Island country? And then this was the first time without our children at an overseas post. Were we going to make good friends? Was there anything else to do besides going to the beach? <laughs> I am happy to say, both professionally and personally, Samoa was so great that I asked for and received an extension. I was supposed to leave last August. And then the State Department said I could stay till August of 2020. And as the things work out, the State Department says, now you gotta leave in March. <laughs> <laughs> but at least I got an extra six months in. I still remember my second day in the office when the embassy staff prepared a breakfast and sang Samoan songs to me. That's when I knew I was going to love them. Ambassador Scott Brown and his wife Gail went out of their way to ensure Izumi and I were doing fine. They've treated us warmly, made personal time for us each time they visited Samoa, and invited us to their home in New Zealand each time we visit there. He's always willing to call the key American official in Washington or Honolulu to press them for assistance when it comes to the bilateral relationship with Samoa. He's entrusted me to run the day-to-day -day bilateral relationship, and he takes my views into consideration when he's formulating policy. I appreciate, I appreciate that, and I've done my best over these last two, two and a half years not to let him down. The single biggest reason Congress established an embassy in Samoa in 1990 was to provide visa services to Samoans living here, as well as in American Samoa. <coughs> And this week, to show that we're doing that, we're actually doing Visa Week. <laughs> and one of our consular officers is here. Amy, where are you at? I want to give you some acknowledgement.
she came down from Auckland, or she came up from Auckland. She's been interviewing these.